Welcome to CNN Student News. We're glad to see you this Tuesday. The show begins with a report involving the issue of profiling. It's defined as making generalizations about people based on their behavior or characteristics like race or gender. The U.S. government is expanding its law enforcement guidelines regarding profiling. Previously, it was banned when it came to race and ethnicity. The new rules announced yesterday build on that, making it illegal for law enforcement to profile people based on religion, country of origin, gender, or sexual orientation. Outgoing Attorney General Eric Holder calls profiling ineffective and says it wastes resources and undermines the public trust. The new rules apply to federal law enforcement operations and anyone involved in them. They don't apply to state and local operations. They also don't apply to U.S. intelligence gathering or to security screenings at borders and airports. Some critics are calling these guidelines too loose and saying they'll allow the FBI and border security officials to continue profiling people. Airline security experts have said that profiling behavior, but not race or religion, can help reduce travel risks. 2014 has shaped up to be the best year for hiring since the 1990s. The U.S. unemployment rate stayed at 5.8% in October and November. But employers added 321,000 jobs last month, a major increase. Some of these jobs were likely due to seasonal hiring, temporary retail positions that'll end after the holiday season. And wages are still a weak spot. The median income, what Americans are making, is about the same as it was in 1995. The job market is gaining momentum. 321,000 net new jobs added in November, the most since January 2012. The trend? Encouraging. 10 months of job growth, over 200,000. The best year now for job growth since 1999. Digging inside these numbers, I see the quality of jobs starting to improve. The first several years of this recovery featured low paid work, but now the Labor Department calls job strength widespread, spanning professional and business services, retail, healthcare. Yes, the economy is adding fast food workers and low wage work, but hiring is also picking up in warehouses, factories, office parks, hospitals, and labs. Now, the jobless rate is 5.8%, still the lowest in six years. Wages grew slightly in November, but this has been a missing part of the recovery for several years now. Even as demand grows for skilled and unskilled labor, wages have not risen. That makes workers feel this recovery less. On Balance this week taught us a lot about the health of the economy, the best November auto sales in years, record high stocks, very strong job creation, and the lowest gas prices in more than four years. All pretty good signs for the American economy and the American consumer. See if you can ID me. I'm a herbivore that's native to Africa and Asia. All of my species are endangered. My order also includes zebras and horses, but I'm by far the biggest mammal in the group. I'm a rhinoceros. Conservationists estimate there are fewer than 30,000 rhinos left in the world today. One big reason for that, poaching, trespassing and illegally killing rhinos which are slow to reproduce. Their horns are what poachers are after. They're made of keratin, a kind of protein we have in our hair. Sometimes they're sold as trophies, sometimes because they're believed to have healing properties. It's why protecting them in places like South Africa is priority. Above a poaching hotspot, a veterinarian takes aim. This is a dart gun. His goal is to save, not to slaughter. A flash of pink on the rump. The hit's good. On the ground, a veterinary team stand by, wary around the stunned animal, ready with a blindfold as the drugs kick in. So the rhino is darted with a mix of an immobilizer and a tranquilizer, and it takes about three to five minutes from the time it's hit to get it on the ground. And from that moment on, the process is incredibly fast. Oxygen tubes to help with the breathing, and the horn is microchipped. And crucially for South Africa's anti-poaching endeavors, DNA samples are taken. If the animal does get poached, you can actually take a piece of the horn and then link it to a specific carcass. Then another shot to partially reverse the anesthetic. This is clearly one of the most critical moments to get the rhino up using its own body force. Having given it a partial reversal of the tranquilizer, we have to make sure that we don't get in the way. The team haul the rhino to its feet. 
and it takes the few ginger steps towards the trailer, which will carry it to safer ground in a more intensively protected zone in the Kruger National Park. This is why. Just a few miles further north, a rhino carcass lies where it was shot some 10 days ago now. The forensics team have had such a backlog of poaching cases, it's taken them till now to get here. We suspect that they shot it from over there in Mozambique. Kruger National Park shares a 350 kilometer border with Mozambique. This shabby wiring right beside the carcass, all that separates the two countries. It is no deterrent when rhino horn can fetch more than $100,000 per kilogram on the black market, fueled by insatiable demand from Asia, where they wrongly believe that rhino horns can cure diseases like cancer. There was a rumbling on yesterday's transcript page at CNNStudentNews.com. It was the thunder rolling in. In Medina, North Dakota, at Medina Public School, call this the Thunder Roll Call. Over to Vermont, in the state capital of Montpelier, we've got the Raiders today. They're at U32 Middle High School. And in the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, hello to the American School of Rio de Janeiro. Great to have you watching in South America. Anyone successful will tell you, don't fear failure. Author C.S. Lewis wrote that one fails forward towards success. Thomas Edison, inventor of the light bulb, the record player, a movie camera, was once told he was too stupid to learn anything. Henry Ford failed repeatedly in business before the Model T. It's a good thing their failures didn't stop the successes that followed. Let's celebrate the miscue, the faux pas, the failure to launch. Why? Because travel innovation stands on the shoulders of contraptions that never really took off. Some ideas seem far-fetched, like Ford's Nucleon. Never intended for production, Nucleon was a concept car designed to run on nuclear power. In 1958, when nuclear power seemed, well, fun. Other ideas seemed poised for success, but failed to take off, like the jetpack. This Bell Textron rocket belt blew our minds in the 65 Bond thriller Thunderball. Shuttle astronauts enjoyed the convenience of jetpacks. A water-powered version starts at about $68,000. And years before the Empire struck back in Star Wars, General Electric built this walking truck. A human operator inside controls its mechanical legs. But we've never seen anything practical that would fly us over traffic jams during daily commutes. Where is that flying car? like this $279,000 street legal airplane called Transition. Inventors say a version that takes off and lands vertically is in the works and shows just how far we've come in the air and on the ground. 84 years ago in Scotland, inventor George Benny built a demo of his special train driven by a propeller. Old film shows the rail plane's plush passenger cabin and fancy exterior, all the while pulled by a propeller on its nose. But Benny's idea just didn't take. So here's to Benny and inventors like him, whose fascinating ideas just never panned out. They prove that on every great journey, there are some setbacks that move us backward on the way forward. Pudding. It's not just for dessert. It's for racing. The Great Christmas Pudding Race is an annual event in London. Contestants get dressed up in costumes or at least seasonal sportswear, and then they hurry their way through a gauntlet of obstacles and challenges, all while trying to keep their pudding in place. The event raises thousands of dollars for cancer research, and no matter who wins, everybody gets pudding which is really the icing on the cake. It's not a cakewalk. The pound cake becomes ground cake unless they bake it to the finish line, putting pudding on firmer footing, putting up with ups and downs of pudding's ups and downs in order to get their just desserts. I'm Carl Azus with a sweet conclusion to today's show.